Hello, I'm Ron Clark. Today we're going to talk about step six. But let's look at what you've just accomplished with step five. Now, this span of eight to ten months has been a lot of work, a lot of work, and I admire, really, I seriously admire your commitment. It's a great thing. Um, you've mastered the depth point. The depth point is now this uh, place of refuge for you. And you have learned to recognize it and see into the depth point of anything and everything um, and work with the uh, elements and the vital energy within um, another object or person or, or animal or plant or whatever. Um, it gives you a, an extraordinary uh, power um, with, with um, other beings. Okay, It's not a power over them, it's a power with them when you're working from their death point. And that, again, is a very special thing. You've also mastered the projection of elements. I mean, that's a very simple thing for you now. You work with the elements is sort of second nature. And, you know, you've participated in the passive communication with your guardian genius and other entities. and. I'm sure that's been interesting for you um, and will continue to be because now you have that ability you can just carry on. I mean it becomes easier and simpler as time goes by, especially with future lessons and what you learn. So you've been through kindergarten, grade school and now you've graduated high school and so Step six. This is where it gets serious. Um, I will not uh, be breaking the exercises down into a weekly or monthly schedule for you in step six. Um, it's pretty much impossible to do with step six. The work is of a different nature and has a different rhythm. There is, there is not a, um, specific, specific sessions during your day when you're sitting with your eyes closed. There, there are some in this step, but that's not the majority of the work in this step. The majority of the work is in your day-to-day -day life or outdoors, um, yeah, it's a different beast here. Um, uh, <clears throat> so like I was saying, here is where it gets really serious. This is, you know, going for your masters in college. Um, <clears throat> this is adult stuff. And yet it will be like child's play for you to do. Um, there's nothing here uh, beyond your scope of abilities, the abilities you've trained so far, um, all apply to this step. Well, they will apply to all the future steps. Um, so it becomes easier and easier and easier. So I've put down that this should take you between six months and a year. It's impossible for me to say how long it's going to take you. I can't imagine it taking any any less, really, uh, than six months. But, you know, it, it, these are your abilities, and uh, each person is unique in their abilities. For some people, work with the elements was just so simple. Um, for other people, it was more of a struggle, more of a, a trial. Um, same with the depth point. For some people, that's very simple, very easy. Um, for others, it was more of a stretch. Um, <clears throat> so, this will take you as long as it takes you. 
Uh, it, I can see this, this particular step taking several years. It depends on how far you want to go with it and your own natural abilities. So, uh, I will read you, uh, I will go over the exercises of step six. Um, in the physical exercises, from here on out, in initiation to hermetics, um, there's no more physical exercises per se. It's not a part of your daily routine that you have to do in order to balance your training out. We're beyond that point now. Um, there is not going to arise any imbalances from an imbalance in your training. So the main focus in uh, all the future steps are going to be the mental and astral exercises. Now what Bardon does from here on out is in the physical section of each step, he lists, uh, what does he call it? Um, da, 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 da. Uh, the use of occult powers. Um, so, for instance, in this step, it's the creation of elementals. Um, so this isn't something you have to sit down and do um, in the usual manner. Uh, it's at your leisure. Um, it's actually an elective. It's not a requirement. Um, I advise you to do these exercises because you learn so much from doing them. And these are good abilities to have. Okay. So, <clears throat> step six. All the previous work must be mastered. You have to have mastered everything up to now. If you feel you haven't, then go back and brush up and make sure, you know, it's at that level of mastery. Especially the work with the elements, the projection of the elements, uh, and the depth point. You know, specifically those two things must be up to par at this point. Um, and you must continue, as usual, to be a magician and use what you know. That's sort of a requirement of knowing is that you use what you know. Um, so, the mental exercises... <clears throat> okay, in step six, what we are doing is we are beginning the process of achieving and finalizing the mental equilibrium of the elements. By now, we have a good astral equilibrium of the elements. We have progressed in our character transformation to where we feel um, an inner equilibrium. Okay? So, the first exercise is a meditation. Mm, sit down meditation where you must analyze your mind, the functions of your mental body, um, by the elements. Um, you must come to recognize and identify these aspects of your consciousness, these specific aspects of your consciousness, uh, by the elements. So fire is your will your willpower, your, your forcefulness, your, um, yeah, your will. Um, air is your intelligence, your intellect, and your memory, your mental functions, as it were, the, all the things that we think of as mind. Um, water, in the mental body, is your emotional feelings feeling, your sensitivity, um, your astral personality is part of the water aspect of your mind. Um, the earth, that's the whole consciousness, the integrated awareness as a whole. Um, and it's this connection between the fire, 
air, and water aspects of your awareness. So you have to, in these meditations, really come to identify these four, specifically three parts of your awareness and their integration. Okay? And this, this has to be pursued deeply. You must deeply associate these aspects of your awareness to the elements, just like you did in the character transformation. It's all related to the elements. And you will, you know, you know the elements so well at this point that this shouldn't be a problem. It just takes some deep focused meditation. Second meditation is a meditation on tripolarity, essentially. Um, here we must recognize that it is the mind which does all action uh, and it's all perception. Your mind sees through your eyes. Your mind smells through your nose. Your mind hears through your ears. Your mind senses the world around you and your mind acts within that world through your astral and physical bodies. So the point of this meditation is really to shift your conscious awareness to your mind. Your mind is doing everything throughout the day and in this meditation is about recognizing that it is the mind which does everything through your bodies, okay? And <clears throat> next is the, an exercise. It's not a meditation. You will integrated action, or uh, again, tripolar action, where it is your mind physically seeing through your eyes. This is not meditation, this is actual perception. When you perceive something, you have to consciously perceive it with your mind through your astral and physical bodies. And you, have, you start out with small actions, brief actions. Uh, you're doing something with your hands, but it is your mind directing everything through your astral and physical bodies. Okay, it has to be the mind doing everything. And you start with small actions and increase as you become comfortable with it. Increase it to bigger actions, longer spans of time, etc. More and more complex actions. Um, you want to be able to do this for a minimum of 10 minutes of stretch. And you want to eventually build that to hours at a stretch. Okay, this is magical action. Uh, the mind acting through the astral and physical bodies. That is magical action. And you will need this ability for all that comes in the remaining steps. Because they all need to be done in this way as mind directing the action. Okay. And then <clears throat> we will work with the mental senses like we did with the physical and astral senses in previous exercises. So, we take this through. It is the mind that sees and hears and feels with the help of the astral and physical bodies. Now we have to do this with the single senses at first. The mind sees. 
then the mind hears, and then the mind smells. Wait, no, you want to do, <laughs> you can do seeing, hearing, and feeling, the tactile sense. These are the three senses that you will need to really develop in future exercises. Seeing, hearing, and feeling. These are the clairvoyance, clairaudience, and clairsentience. Okay? Um, <clears throat> these are, you will be developing these senses in future steps. So, this time, it's about the senses, just like with the astral and physical senses, um, you're using that the mind is directing all of the censoring, all the perception through the senses. Okay, so that's the, the, the whole mental section for this step. Six months to a year to do this. Um, the things that will take the most time is the integrated magical action. That takes a good amount of time to really perfect. Um, and, you know, the meditations, um, they don't really supplement that, but they make the triple, the tripolar action possible. To make the true tripolar action possible, you've got to do these meditations because so much of it is about your conceptualizations. Um, so, the astral exercises are all about the astral ether. Now, <clears throat> what is the astral ether? Or akasha. Barton also calls this the akasha. Now, this is one form of akasha that we deal with in initiation to hermetics. This is the first form, the lower form of the akasha. Now, <clears throat> In it's really sort of uh, Victorian science, if you will, Victorian physics, um, where a, an ether was postulated. And the ether, the physical ether, is the mental, I mean, excuse me, the astral substrate of physical matter. It's a very, 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 very fine energy. A very subtle energy, so subtle that it is more astral than actually physical. Okay, that's the, the, the physical, astrophysical, or the physical ether. The astral ether is the mental substrate of the uh, astral reality. It's sort of the template for the astral reality. And it is so fine that it is essentially a mental uh, uh, substance. So, we're dealing here with the astral ether, not the physical ether, but the astral ether, which Barden is calling Akasha. Okay. The first exercise is inhalation of the Akasha. So, this is a meditation. You're in your usual asana, <clears throat> with your eyes closed, and you imagine that you exist within an infinite space, stretches out infinitely in every direction. You are in the exact center of that infinity. Now, Having done the meditations on infinity, you will understand the significance of that statement. The exact center of the infinity. And you will inhale with your lungs only, inhale the Akasha. Now the Akasha, um, we're going to give um, a violet color or a, a black violet color. It's a very, very dark violet color, almost black. And that it fills 
the entire infinite space and you are inhaling this with your lungs and you are inhaling it and directing it to your blood that courses throughout your body it is being fed excuse me with the akasha now it's impossible to accumulate the akasha it doesn't take on greater and greater density the akasha just is so you are breathing it in and filling your blood with the akasha it's a simple exercise but it will take a while to really connect with the akasha okay when you do you will just like with the elements or the vital energy you will recognize that moment when uh, you know the creative imagination is no longer necessary but at the beginning you will use that creative imagination the imagination with will and you will connect with the akasha okay once you have done that <clears throat> We will move on to a slightly different exercise. Again, it's, you're in your asana <clears throat> with your eyes closed and in the universe, the infinite universe filled with the akasha, you are at the exact center point and now you will pour breathe the akasha and you will fill your whole body with it. This is your mental astral and physical bodies all of them are being filled with the akasha in this exercise as you progress with it you must become that infinity of akasha this is a trance state okay barden refers to it as a trance state similar to the depth point trance state but here you become the infinity of the akasha you're not your depth point it's similar to the depth point in that it's infinite nature but it is an infinity of akasha that you are becoming the astral ether okay Now, once you have spent a goodly amount of time as the Akasha, um, and you have made that transition to becoming the infinite universe of the Akasha, you will do the same thing you will fill your body with the akasha through pore breathing you will become the akasha with using your whole body physical astral and mental and now you will impress with your will your fiery will with the greatest strength of your will you will impress upon it the realization that you have mastered, completely mastered, the elements. Okay? So, through this process of affirming the fact that you are master of the elements, you will achieve true mastery of the elements and any work from this point forward with the elements is child's play so your will must be absolute you must be absolutely convinced in this exercise that you have absolute mastery over the elements and in time you will see Stating that within the astral akasha makes it an astral and physical fact. That is the nature 
of the Akashic realm, this level of the Akashic realm, that any willing, any strong, magical willing that is placed in the Akasha inevitably becomes an astral and a physical fact. And here is your first opportunity to prove that. And you will know <laughs> if you succeed. You will know if you succeed in putting this seed in the astral akasha because it will become an astral and physical fact. And you will achieve mastery over the elements. And once you have achieved mastery over the elements, and this may take you some time, then you are to make between 8 and 16 new rituals with the elements. Now, these will be instantaneous rituals. It's not going to take you uh, the time that it took you to create these rituals with the, that you uh, went through with the finger rituals. There is no endless repetition. It's automatic because you are a master of the elements. And these rituals, this time, will be keyed with a simple word or phrase. It doesn't even have to be out loud. It can be silent in your head. Just a simple word, phrase, it can come with a gesture if you need. But it needs to be simple and instantaneous. You will have one ritual with each element to uh, manifest the element and one ritual with each element to uh, uh, dissipate the element, okay? So you will make these for physical works and then you will make another set of eight for astral works. So you will have two sets of rituals here, one for physical manifestations and one for astral manifestations. Okay, so uh, you want to affect someone at an emotional level, you use an astral ritual. You want to affect something at a physical level, you use a physical ritual. So, this can be a whole lot of fun, figuring out your rituals and you never share these with anybody. These are your rituals and your rituals alone. Okay? So, that's the mental and the astral work. And that should take you at least six months. I can't imagine it taking any less than six months. And don't worry if it does take you a year, a year and a half, two years. That's okay. You know, just do it to its fullest, to its fullest. Don't do it part way, okay? Take the time. Take it to its fullest extent. That will guarantee you success in future steps, okay? Now, the physical exercises, again, as I said, they are elective. They're not a requirement, but, oh, definitely do them. It's the creation of elementals. And you'll read uh, the Barden's text. It's very clear. Explains different kinds of elementals. The elementals, the creation of beings, it's called. But they're all elementals. Um, creation of elementals proper. Creation of larvae, shadows, and phantoms. This is very valuable work. Because in the next step, uh, you're going to be taking a step further. You're going to be creating elementaries. You're going to be animating uh, pictures and things like that. So having this first step, working with elementals, and they're very handy. It's a good education for a magician to be able to create an elemental and elementaries, etc. But that comes in future steps. So, yeah, I don't have as much to say this time because there's 
really less to say. It's just about doing it and immersing yourself in the Akasha, immersing yourself in the mental senses, uh, you know, taking your actions uh, to the level of being true magical actions that involve mental, astral, and physical simultaneously. When you do your healing work with anybody, if you do your healing work mentally, astrally, and physically, simultaneously your healing becomes much more holistic, much more powerful, much more permanent, etc. So, have fun. I mean, this, this is a really special step, especially the work with the Akasha. That, like I said, uh, uh, being in the emptiness, that feeds you in one way. Being in your depth point feeds you in another way. Now, the work with the Akasha, the astral Akasha, feeds you in a whole new way and takes you forward spiritually. In a, well, this is, like I said, university now. You know, we're going for our master's degree. We are truly becoming a master magician. And this is the first steps. So, good luck and have fun. I'll catch you later. The end of step six. Bye-bye. <laughs>